Welcome to the fourth part of my Adobe Lightroom Classic Masterclass. In this video, we'll tweak the colors of our image with the HSL panel as well as the color grading panel. I'm a huge fan of tweaking the colors of my photos, so I would even dare to say that the HSL panel is actually my favorite tool of all of Lightroom. So let's jump into Lightroom and see how it works. So on the top here, you have options for HSL and color. They both do the exact same thing, but just in a different order. HSL stands for hue, saturation and luminance, so you can select which of these parameters you're tweaking and you can see a list of all the colors that you can tweak. In the color mode, you can select which color you want to tweak and then you have all the same settings for that color that you selected. I prefer using the HSL mode, but it's all up to you which one you feel fits better for your workflow. Now in the HSL panel, you can select which parameter to tweak or you can also show them all at the same time as a long list like this, but I prefer working in a smaller workspace, so one parameter at a time. But once again, this is just purely personal preference, up to you which one you like. Now let's actually start off with the saturation, even though it's not the first on the list. And saturation basically means the strength of a color, so how colorful will a specific color be? And a higher saturation will result in a more colorful image. So in the basic panel, you could tweak the saturation for the entire image at once, but in the HSL panel, you can tweak the saturation for each individual color, which makes it a whole lot more powerful. So for example, if you want to make the blue tones a little bit more colorful, but keep everything else the same, you can only tweak the blues here, instead of tweaking every single color with one slider. Now, if you hold down Alt on a Windows or Option on a Mac while doing the tweaks, Lightroom will turn everything else black and white except for the color that you are tweaking so you can better see what you're actually doing. Now one thing that I always do before I start tweaking the colors is I actually bring up the saturation of each individual color to 100. This will make it a lot easier to see what you're doing to the colors of the image. So let's push all of the saturations to 100 and go over to the Hue tab at this point. In the Hue tab we can change the color of every individual color. So for example we can make reds more orange or more purpley, but the Hue slider here is a bit limited so you can't make the reds green for example, but you are limited to a specific range of hues that you can tweak. But what the hue slider is excellent for is getting the colors exactly how you want them to be. So for example, I prefer my skies or my blues to be a little bit more aqua, so I'll bring down the blue slider just a bit. And I also don't like how yellow this image is, so I'll bring down the yellow slider a bit towards orange, and maybe I'll take down the purple towards the blue as well, if there's any purple cast in RC for example. And I could actually take the greens more towards the aqua side as well. Now once again I could also go to this little circle here and click on that and then for example go to the C and drag up. Now this might change a few different colors in the panel because for example the water might be a little bit blue, a little bit aqua and a little bit purple. So using this little circle tool will let us tweak all of those colors at the same time. So you can see I'm actually changing the blue and the aqua right now. If I click on the city here, we're actually changing the orange and the yellow instead of just changing the orange colors. So that's also a very great way to get some object to the exact color that you want it to be because you don't have to guess which all colors Lightroom sees in that object. You can only use that color picker tool to change all of the color values in that object. Now there is no right or wrong in terms of what you do with the colors of your image, so just play around with them and see what you like. But I think colors are an especially important part about how the final image will look like, so spend a little bit of time with the colors and get them just right, just the way you want them to be. But once again, no right or wrong, just do what you think looks great. So here I'll take the yellows a little bit more downwards towards the orange and the oranges a little bit towards the red as well. And I think this is kind of looking fine. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I don't think this is perfect, but it's fine enough for now. So let's go back over to the saturation tab and reset all of these. Now we could reset them by double clicking on each one of them, or we can just double click on the saturation text right here, or we could hold down Alt on Windows or Option on a Mac and then click Reset Saturation. So as we had the saturation at 100, we could really see what we're doing to the hues of the different colors. But now that the hues are correct, we can actually start to tweak the saturation. So I don't think I want to have any reds in here or purples, so I'll bring them down, but I want to bring up the oranges a bit up and the blues a bit up as well. And I might actually go back to the blues and tweak the uh, hue of the blues a little bit more towards aqua still. Now when it comes to saturation, I think an oversaturated image usually looks 
cheap and amateurish so be careful with going too high up on the saturation but once again it's all up to you i'm not saying you shouldn't push the saturation too high i'm just saying i think it usually looks a bit amateurish but now that our saturations are tweaked let's go over to luminance luminance is basically the brightness values of a color so i could for example take the blue luminance and bring it up to brighten my sky and bring the yellow luminance up to brighten the city but i don't want to do that i actually might want to go a bit down with the orange and yellow and now I might actually want to go a bit down with the saturation on the yellow as well. And then a bit up with the green to bring the forest back. And as you can see, I'm going back and forth with this because changing the luminance will kind of affect how the saturation of a color looks. So you always have to go back and forth to tweak these to get them exactly right. Now with the luminance, sometimes depending on your image, if you tweak the values too much, you may end up with some artifacts in your image. So keep an eye out for those if you do any heavy tweaks to the luminance values. So for example, if I zoom into the sky and bring down the luminance all the way, you can see that the edge of this mountain is now looking a little bit weird. So that's something you should keep an eye out for while tweaking the luminance values. Things may start to look a little bit weird if you go too far with the luminance. So as I said, the Edgesel panel is actually my favorite tool in all of Lightroom. I just love tweaking the colors of my images, but that is all you need to know about the Edgesel panel. So let's move on to the color grading tab. If you're familiar with color grading videos, you'll most likely be familiar with the tools in the color grading tab as well. Here you have three color wheels, each representing a brightness value of the image. So the shadows will tweak the dark parts of the image, the highlights will tweak the bright parts of the image and the midtones will tweak everything in between. You can view all of these wheels at once or each individually, but both viewing modes can do almost the exact same things. If you want to view them individually, click on these little circles up here. Now up here you also have a global wheel. Now the individual view also has these sliders for the values that you're tweaking in addition to just using the wheel. So if you want to use sliders instead of dragging around with the wheel, you can do it in the individual view. And in the individual view, we also have a color picker. So this little box here is a color picker. So we can click and drag on this eyedropper and just drag over our image to select a color that we want to add to the part of the image that we're tweaking. Now the global wheel will tweak everything in the image at once. So it will just change the color of the entire image instead of focusing on one brightness area of the image. So if for example you want to make the whole image warmer you can do it here in the global wheel tweaks. Personally I actually work in the three wheel mode because of the way the tweaks work in combination for the whole image so I don't have to switch the tab between the tweaks that I make. So if you're for example tweaking the midtones it might actually change how the shadows look a bit as well so the end result is always a combination of using all of the wheels so that's why I prefer working in the mode where you can see all of the three wheels at once. Now the way you use this is really simple you can just drag the point from the center to anywhere you want to and it will add that color to your image. The closer you are to the middle, the less of an effect you're doing to your image and the further away from the center you are, the more saturated that color will be that you're adding into the image. So for example, if I want to add a bit of blue to the highlights, I could grab this circle and just drag the circle towards the blue here in the highlights wheel. And the closer I am to the edge, the more blue I'm adding to the highlights of my image. And if I now want to tweak the brightness of the color that I'm adding, I can use this slider below the wheel. So this will make the color brighter and darker depending on what I want to do. I can also just brighten up the whole image without actually using this like color thing here. I can only use the slider to make the midtones or the shadows or the highlights brighter also if I want to but I don't see any reason why I would do it here in the color wheels because for example the curves are a lot more powerful to do that. But if you need to fine tune something while working with the colors, you can do it in here as well. Now, once again, tweaking the colors with the color wheels is all personal preference. So it's all up to you what you do. But if you add some blue to the shadows and some blue to the highlights and then a bit of orange to the midtones, you're creating the orange and teal look that is actually very popular in many movies. And this is something that I actually like to do for quite many of my images. Now I would go back and forth to tweak this the way I want it to be. So this is a bit too green. So I'd bring it a bit more towards the blue side. And then I would actually reset the global wheel here all together. And now it's looking a bit too cold. So I'd add a bit more orange to the midtones. 
and I'm really liking the way this is starting to look. Now I do think it's a bit too red so let's bring up all of these towards the yellow side a bit. So that's starting to look good. Now I'll just view the before and after these so you can see what we're really doing. Now I think I'm adding a bit too much blue into the shadow so let's just bring the blue slider a bit towards the center here. Now one thing to note is once you've tweaked a color, once you grab this circle, you'll actually be kind of limited so if you move it a bit to the sides, you're not actually changing the hue of the color but the saturation but if you just pull it far enough now it will kind of unlock the wheel so that you can put it anywhere you want to. This is just a feature to help you better tweak the hue that you've selected so that you're not accidentally changing the hue while changing the saturation of the selected color. And if you hold down Alt or Option while clicking on this circle you can actually move it in smaller increments so that you can do some more fine detail with your tweaks. Now in the color grading tab you also have these sliders called blending and balance. Blending will determine how strongly the colors you choose with the wheels will blend into each other, essentially making the transition from one color to the other smoother or more aggressive. So if I bring the blending all the way down, the wheels are only affecting the area that they say they affect, but if I bring it all the way up, they're actually kind of bleeding into each other, so now the highlights and the shadows are also affecting the midtones a bit. Now let's reset this and use the balance next. So balance will change the balance of the highlights and the shadows tweaks you done. So if you want to have a bit more of the shadow color added you can bring this down and if you want to have a bit more of the highlight color added you can bring this up. Now I would usually not touch the blending or the balance so I would leave the blending at 50 and the balance at 0 but sometimes I might take the blending down a bit just to fine tune the color tweaks that I'm doing to my image but usually it's fine to just leave them as they are and just use the wheels to tweak the colors how you want them to be. So in a way the wheels in the color grading tab do a lot of the same stuff as the RGB curves do but I think the color grading tab has a lot nicer interface and I think the color grading is a lot nicer to use so personally I don't really use the RGB curves to tweak the colors in the different brightness ranges of my image I use the color grading tab which is something that I really like to use. But that is all I have for this video about tweaking the colors of your images in Adobe Lightroom Classic. At this point I would really go back and forth playing with the colors to get them exactly where I want them to be but at this point you should be at a really good point with your colors. Now that we've tweaked the colors and the contrasts of our image we've actually kind of done the basic editing that you want to do to your image and you should have a really good looking image at this point already. So at this point if we just hit reset we can see the original image here and then just command Z to undo that and we can see the edited image. So we've really done a massive difference to the image as a whole. But I don't think I really like the blues of this right now, so I'd go ahead and tweak this a lot more. But for the sake of this tutorial, I think this is looking really good compared to the original image that we had. There's still a lot of fancy tools and for example masking which is a massive tool inside of Lightroom but at this point we are really quite far with our editing process already. Now if you have any questions about anything that has to do with Lightroom just drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. In the next part we'll take a look at sharpening and noise reduction and some corrections we can do to our image. So I'll see you in the next part. Shoo.